with our next guest. Joining us from London, Simon Moores, the Managing Director of Benchmark Mineral Intelligence. Uh, Simon, you are the leading provider of pricing data for lithium, key ingredient of uh, electric battery technology, but there are concerns that if the world was to start producing electric cars at the current rate of production, we could use up the world's resources within 17 to 40 years. Uh, what's missing from that analysis? Uh, quite a bit, really. I mean, lithium isn't rare. It's, the question is getting it out of the ground in economic quantities. And at the moment, the lithium industry has gone through a, a surge in exploration and new development. But right now, there's not, not as much investment going into the lithium industry to go beyond 2025. So the numbers you've quoted really are looking at uh, maybe minerals in the ground, but isn't taken into, uh, into account uh, production that's coming on stream and new exploration that's going to happen. But the takeaway point is lithium isn't geologically rare, but the challenge is getting it into the supply chain in economic quantities. You talk about uh, funding. Um, it's being held back, isn't it? Because investors just don't know how to price this, this mineral at the moment. They're looking for the likes of the London Metals Exchange to provide a tradable contract, just like copper and the like. But a lot of players within the industry don't particularly like to trade it that way. That's exactly right. So lithium is traded in private contracts between buyer and seller. And at Benchmark, we create an independent reference price to enable that supply chain to trade uh, with more clarity and more freedom than ever before. But as lithium grows, there's going to be new uh, ways to trade lithium contracts. And one was the London Metal Exchange. You have a, num a number of other exchanges looking at it as well. But lithium is a speciality chemical. It's going from the niche, a 300,000 ton a year industry, into the mainstream to about a million tons in the mid-2020s. And with that will come different ways to trade this. And when you're expanding that quickly in a market, lithium can't just rely on itself to expand anymore. It's going to need external capital. And the issue with that external capital is investors are, at present, too scared to put their money into it because either they don't understand lithium, it's too risky, it's too specialist, or the EV story is, for some, too good to be true. And I think that's the main challenge at the moment. So how do you go about pricing lithium? Uh, is it all about supply and demand? Yeah, it's, it's uh, very similar to any other commodity industry out there, although, I, as I say, it's a speciality chemical. Uh, but quite simply, if you know the lithium industry, you know the people that produce it, you know the intermediate companies, and you know the people that are buying this, uh, the range of speciality chemicals, uh, which go under the bracket of lithium, then you can put together an independent reference price, an independent uh, benchmark price is what we're looking at in the next few years. And that then allows uh, new participants, especially such as battery companies and electric vehicle companies, which aren't used to buying lithium, it allows them to trade and to write contracts with more clarity than ever before. And that's really the role we play in the market. And where is lithium right now in terms of its price? I mean, it's come off, off its highs, hasn't it? It has, yeah. We saw a peak in lithium price really in 2017, and it's come down since last year and it's carried on falling uh, before uh, even even further so the issue really is um, the issue actually is getting the battery grade material into the supply chain so lithium price hasn't if you look at the average lithium prices it hasn't actually crashed the, the material within China has crashed but the rest of the grades going into battery grade material which is quite a specialist grade and that's what's going to need to expand has actually remained relatively high compared to historical levels as you say, it's, it's not a rare mineral. As new uh, sources of lithium come online, uh, is there a danger that there might be uh, oversupply uh, and, and that could impact negatively uh, upon the price? How long does it get? Once you've got the investment, how long does it get these, these mines up and running? Yeah, it's a really good question because it takes anywhere between eight and ten years to build a lithium mine from scratch and to get it ramped up without any problems. And that's the biggest challenge for lithium. Um, the investment has gone into the mid-2020s, as I said, but really the, the surge in electric vehicle production is coming after that point. And there's a big question mark over where the money is going to come from for all these future lithium mines. But as I said, the exploration, people know these tier one lithium sources now. They understand the tier two sources. Uh, the question is if the money is going to be committed 
And at the moment, it's not coming from the capital markets, it's coming from the industry itself. All right, for the moment, Chinese entities control nearly half of, of global lithium production and 60% of electric battery production capacity. Um, does that become a security concern for other nations? It has to, especially the US. I mean, when you look at for certain parts of the supply chain, should I, should I add, so when you look at the lithium uh, structure, you've got six big producers, two of which are Chinese, uh, two of which are actually American producers mining in South America. And uh, the question really isn't on the structure of the lithium industry. That kind of, that does operate in a, uh, a sensible, normal, uh, market-driven way. It's actually where this lithium-ion battery capacity is being built out. So we've, uh, we collect this data also at Benchmark, and we've got 1.9 terawatt hours of battery capacity by 2029. It sounds a lot. It means about 35 million electric vehicles. But where is that capacity being built out? It's China. 67% of this battery capacity is in China. How much is in the US? It's about 8%. The question is, if you take Tesla and their huge gigafactory out of the equation, the number is 3%. So the US really uh, should be concerned about these supply chains, and it is playing catch up with China. Simon, really good to talk to you on Counting the Cost. Many thanks indeed for being with us. Simon Moores, Managing Director at Benchmark Mineral Intelligence. And that's our show for this week. If you'd like to comment on anything that you've seen, you can tweet me. I'm at A Finnegan on Twitter. Please use the hashtag AJCTC when you do, or you could drop us a line. Counting the cost at aljazeera.net is our email address. As always, there's plenty more for you online at aljazeera.com slash CTC. That takes you straight to our page, and there you'll find individual reports, links, even entire episodes for you to catch up on. But that's it for this edition of Counting the Cost. I'm Adrian Finnegan from the whole team here in Doha. Thanks for being with us. The news on Al Jazeera is next.